Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And I have got an amazing, actually an amazing discovery that I've made here uh, this evening while I was in prayer over the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I wanted to share this with you. I, I did a message just recently from uh, the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32, but I didn't complete the whole thing, and I was reading and praying about this this afternoon because there's one part of the scripture that has just been puzzling me and so I, I, I went into the Hebrew language, I looked at it there and you know and, and I just couldn't quite figure this out and so I just kept praying about it and kept reading it and finally the Lord unraveled a mystery that I didn't even intend to see. Had, had no expectation that I was going to see this at all. So let's first, let's, let's move into um, uh, I'd like to take you to, to chapter 32, verse 18, and uh, I'm going to read from the King James because most of you guys are using that anyway, uh, but I will be touching on some of the Hebrew on this because I think it's important that you understand as well. Uh, the first verse so I just want to, that I'm going to read here, verse 18, God says here, Of the rock that begot thee, thou wast unmindful, and didst forget God that bore thee. You see? Tzu yadecha tashi. Be the rock that begot you. Now that's interesting. If you want a being born again message, that is your being born again message. The rock that, that begat you. Because the rock in the wilderness that was smitten by Moses and the rock was split in half. It was judged by the elders of Israel. That rock was foreshadowing the coming of Christ. The water from that rock foreshadows the very life that was in that was at the tree of life in the Garden of Eden that was that that way was sealed away from the children of Israel or from all of all the humanity that, that, that was guarded. The way of the tree of life was guarded. Yeshua said, I mean, the Jews, we should have realized who he was. He says, I am that way. I am the truth. I am the life. He claims to be the life, the Chaim, the Eitz Chaim in the Garden of Eden. And he says, I am the way. The way was guarded. The way was, was stopped. God would not allow it back in Adam and Eve, no, nor their descendants. See, now Adam and Eve, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the rock begot them. The rock breathed that life into them. That's what, that's what the prophecy is about right here. The rock itself was breathing the life into... When, when, when you go back to Genesis, and I'm really excited, so bear with me here. I'm still sick, and, and, but I'm healed. I'm healed, so... But uh, I'm excited about this revelation because you're going to find out the identity of the Antichrist. Moses himself has written it by the hand of Almighty God, you have no other choice around it. I know a lot of people want to say the Pope is a false prophet. Yeah, he's a false prophet too. He's the same man, all right? But we'll go into that later, all right? But I'm just excited about this. Anyway, so, but the rock that had, see, he says here, yeladecha tashi, of the rock that begot you. Okay, you're unmindful. I think that's how it is in the, in the King James. Let me get it over here in the King James for you here. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Formed thee. He's talking about Adam and Eve. Remember, Eve is in the same body. When God forms Adam from the dust of the ground, the God that formed thee, the God that formed thee is the same God that's the rock that begot you. So he's, that's what God's trying to identify here. The God that formed you is the rock that begot you. And God that formed the man, Elohim, from the dust of the ground. Remember when Yeshua takes Jesus himself and he takes the blind man and he puts the clay? He spits on the ground and makes clay and then puts it over his eyes and tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. I've taken you there before in video and showed you the very pool of Siloam, raised up the water, and as I said to you in a video one time, I said, it wasn't the fact that the water was a healing thing. He, got, he was showing you who he was. He was the same God that took and formed from the dust of the earth and made Adam and breathed into his nostrils. Uh, nishmar chayim. He breathed in his nostrils the what? The chayim, the breath of life. The chayim is from what? Eitz Chaim. 
When they partook of the tree of life, what was it? They didn't go and take of the tree of life. The tree of life was a free gift from God himself. That's why when you see about Yeshua, he is a free gift. It is a free gift unto you. My Jewish brethren, you want to be born again. You want the Eitz Chaim. You want that life from the tree of life that Adam and Eve had. And it is in the rock. You just got to recognize who your rock is. And unfortunately, when my Jewish brothers in Israel and the politicians, you've taken the wrong rock. We're going to go into that tonight. Oh, it's exciting. It's very exciting. But anyway, the rock, the rock was Christ Jesus. It was Yeshua, HaMashiach. Everything that Moses did back with the children of Israel, when, when they come out to, to Meribah and they were chiding with Moses and they said, you know, is God even with us or not? It's the same thing you said when Yeshua came, is God with us? They, they, he says he's God because he says he's the son of God. Now, don't get, don't get it wrong. I'm not giving you a oneness idea here. I'm trying to show you. Because, see, God said that not everything that was created was created by him and for him. And God, through him, did the creation. See, God Almighty, the invisible God, through Christ, did all of these things. And there's nothing that exists, both visible or invisible, that was not created by Yeshua himself. So it was Yeshua that formed Adam from the dust of the ground. It was Yeshua that breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. Why do you think he said to the apostles after his resurrection, he breathed on them and he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He was showing that he was the same God that breathed in the nostrils of Adam. And he didn't breathe just one life in there. The Bible says, He breathed plural life in there. Why? Because Eve is in there with him. And when she is brought forth, nowhere do we have to see that he has to breathe in her nostrils. She already comes forth filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like John as a type of the redemption of the bride, John comes filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Imagine that. Receive the Holy Ghost while he's in his mother's womb. Isn't it something? So anyway, they're unmindful of the rock that has begotten you and, that for, and the God that forms you. You have forgotten Israel. This, is, this message is to Israel. You forgot about the God that forms you, the rock that begot you. And why does he say the rock that begot you? Because if, the, if Moses, when they smote the rock in the wilderness, the rock was split, the water came forth from it, showing it was the waters of life, from the tree of life. And that's why Christ was put on a tree. He was put on a cross. He was put on a tree. Why? Because he is that tree of life. Don't you see who he is? They hung him on a tree because he was the eighth Chaim and he had to be smitten. And when he was smitten by the Roman soldier and his side was tore open, you people out there that have been watching these Antichrist videos that condemn, you say, oh, a Jewish guy out there trying to tell us who the Antichrist is. You're the one, that the Jews, you killed him. Yes, we condemned him to death, but it was the Gentiles that actually did the dirty work. Now, we're all guilty. I'm not trying to put a blame, but I'm trying to drive that in a little harder so you understand. You know, none of us are innocent. Jew nor Gentile. They're blinded. The Bible says they're blinded for your sake to give you an opportunity to come in while there's still time and hope for the Gentiles. So don't, look, don't be high-minded toward the Jewish people. If anything, have mercy on them because God has blinded them and he keeps them blinded right to the end. Giving you a chance, every Gentile had a chance to come in. So don't look down on them. But nonetheless, there's some of us like myself that have, their eyes are opened. And I can see, I, I, I see who he is. It's incredible. So anyway, he was that rock. But when that Roman soldier pierced his side with his, with his spear, and blood and water came out from his side, that water was showing you 
that he was the rock that had been smitten. That was showing you what Moses did. That, see, the, 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 clearly in the prophecy that happened at Meribah, it shows that what Israel would be the one that would judge him and accuse him. And Israel would be the one that would smite him. So no, we're not innocent. Why do you think in Zechariah 12 it says we look upon him whom we've pierced and, 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 and said, where did you get these wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. And, and let, me just, let me just share with you. I mean, I'm, I know I'm, I'm actually quoting like a separate verse as well, not just Zechariah 12. Um, because there is a scripture, and I forget exactly where that's at, that says, where did you get these wounds? And he says, in the house of my friends. You know? But in Zechariah 12, it says here that, um, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, for as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. You see, we got a day of reckoning coming ourselves and it's going to be a bitter day because all these years we thought we were on the right path let me share with you what the prophecy says so I haven't even got to the prophecy yet this is so incredible all right now that I just want to get you about the part about the rock and when the Lord saw it and he had horbed them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters, he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Gentiles coming in. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn in the, in the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the fountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them and I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them and with the poison of serpents of the dust, the sword without the terror within the destroy, both the young man and the virgin and the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. The holocaust, the pogroms. The Inquisitions. You know something my wife was saying to me today that was really interesting, and I, and, and I cannot wait till we bring this out as well. We, do, we see the Holocaust against the Jewish people all the way down through time, but you know there was also a Holocaust against women when they burned witches and stuff that were not witches. They were just women that were spiritual. Some of them, <laughs> just no reason at all, just so the Vatican could get their estates. We'll go into that later too. Anyway, let's, let's continue on here. This, <clears throat> and they shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat. We just read that. Verse 30, 25. The sword without and terror within and shall destroy both young men and virgin and the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. And I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them cease from among men were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. Now, it's not actually the word fear. Let me... Let me take you here in the Hebraic language for you here. Okay, verse 27. Lo ali ka'aseis oviyave egor. It's, uh, he said that, that, that it would, that he, that, it, that he would, he would dread the enemy's provocation. Lest their adversaries should misdeem, lest they should say, Our hand is exalted, and not the Lord hath wrought all this. Now, here's what's interesting God identifies the, their adversary, the one that's been doing this to them. Now he's starting to tell us that their adversary. Oh, hang on one second, I got it. And, and I'm, I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to go quickly, brothers, sisters, on this. I really am. Obadiah, let me just share this with you here. One, all right, let's look at the verse again. 
in verse 27. I'll read it in King James. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Interesting, isn't it? God's already showing you that He's going to use an adversary, an enemy, to bring these evils against Israel. Isn't it interesting that the Catholic Church has really had a lot of hand in the destruction of the Jews? Did you know that? Did you know that they were the ones that created Islam? Uh, with Kaji, who was a loyal Catholic girl, they had her marry uh, Muhammad. She was a very wealthy Catholic girl, given all of her state over. She was, she was an Arabic girl. Give her a state over to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was in its infancy at the time, about 200 years old. And, uh, and, and sure enough, they used this, this great movement and the Crusades to, to wipe out all the true believing uh, Jews that were Christians because they didn't go along with Constantine's new setup of what his doctrine should be. Interesting, isn't it? Don't have time to get into all that. But anyhow, from that point all the way down through time, Hitler, everything, Pope Pius XII, all the popes have been against them. The early church fathers that, that are quote-unquote the church fathers uh, were most of them all Jew haters and said they should be killed and if they don't convert, they should be forced to convert. Totally ignoring Paul's letters. Totally ignoring them. And, uh, but nonetheless, so we know that Israel's enemy has been Rome ever since then. And, and, and one other thing too, even in Obadiah, Obadiah identifies that it's Adam, okay, Adam or Esau. Verse 6, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none to understanding in him. Oh, that's interesting. You know, that's what you're going to read here in Deuteronomy 32 as well. And by the way, that confederacy, that's Psalm 83. Notice they're confederate one another together. They're confederate for what? To come against Israel. Remember that? I, I won't take the time to go over there. But God is identifying this as Esau. And of course, in Psalm 83, it's the tents of Esau. Are the tents of Adam? I believe that's right. Uh, uh, gosh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to just quickly look at this, guys. Um, I don't have everything marked, so I'm just kind of just jumping around here quickly. Psalm 83. Keep thou not all silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. Be be, be not still, O God. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like one of the? Doesn't that sound like the seventh seal? There was silence in heaven for the space of about a half an hour. For lo, thine enemies make atonement. They that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may, may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Confederacy. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites and Moab and the Hagarenes and Geba. See, they created, they created the, the, the Muslim religion. The Sunnis are their main key people there. The Shiites are not so much for, the, for Rome. This is why you see all the wars going on, the Sunnis and Shiites killing one another. But anyway, so we identify Esau back here, though. But now you're going to find out who Esau is. Because remember, the Ark of Titus is in Rome. It shows the temple treasures going back to Rome. Now, I've had people, one guy come in one time and made a comment, and he says, there was no Catholic Church at the time. I, I understand that. But nonetheless, it was the infancy with Constantine and the beginning and the birth of the so-called Christianity, which it was not Christianity, it was the Vatican idea or the early infancy of the church that began in Rome, and yes, that is where the treasures went, and that is where the treasures are to this day. Gershon Solomon, very dear friend of mine in Israel there, has even said that they have had eyewitness account to see it, so no doubt the Pope of Rome, maybe not this one here, but in times past, has allowed certain Jewish people to see that what they have, they do have. So I'll leave it at that. He goes on to say, 
Back in Obadiah again. Shall I not in that day say the Lord even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men of Teman and shall be dismayed to the end of every one that the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast one of them. So that's true. Rome did not do it alone. They were using the different men and stuff from Syria and all the other regions of the time, just like they're doing today. Rome is not just doing this by themselves. They're confederate with, the, with Hezbollah. They're confederate with the Syrians. They are confederate, I mean, face it. Did not, did not uh, the, 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 the president of Syria send a letter to the Pope of Rome saying what conditions he would be willing to surrender? And now there's not even have to be a surrender or anything. Pope of Rome controls them. And they're plotting and planning against Israel. According to Psalm 83, because they want to wipe Israel off the map. And the politicians in Israel have no more sense to understand what Rome is doing to you. Mm. He just identifies it now and he says it's Esau. So the, the, the Roman Catholic Church are the Edomites of today. I'm not talking about, there's a lot of Good people that are Catholic that are tied up into that system. The Bible clearly says, come out of her, my people. Be not partakers of her sins. And he's not just talking about Gentiles either there. He's talking about the Jews that are caught up in that mess. That prophecy of Revelation 18.4 was to Israel because God knew that Israel would make a covenant with Rome. And Moses knew it. And Moses prophesied of it and tells you exactly who that covenant is made with. And you thought Daniel was the only one that knew. Mm. But thou shouldest not have been, okay, we already read that. Verse 13, thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Laid hands on their substance. Yes, the Roman general Titus. That's why the Ark of Titus is right there commemorating, taking the treasures, the substance, back to Rome. So it did happen. It is historical. Now, we're going to come back to Obadiah, but let me first go back to uh, Deuteronomy, it's very important that we see this here. And in Deuteronomy chapter 32, we're going to go to verse 28. Um, For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Let me go back to verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. And I've told you before, I, I don't know if he's referring this directly to Israel, but it seems more like he's referring this to the enemy that Israel is dealing with. They're void of counsel. They supposedly believe that Yeshua is their counselor, but they have no counselor. They, have no, they do not believe in him. Mm. Follow with me carefully, brother, sisters. This is very serious here. Oh, that they were wise. That, and, and this is what makes me wonder if it's uh, replying to Israel. That they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So it may be directly to Israel in the first place. I, like I said, it's hard to say because when I'm looking at the different prophecies over here uh, in Obadiah, it speaks about Edom being without, or no, I'm sorry, in Psalm 83, I believe it is, it said they're, they're void of counsel as well, something similar to that anyway. Uh, let's go on though. Verse 30, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? Isn't that interesting? That was what really stumbled me. Let's look at this real carefully. Let me take you back. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand? Now I'm reading, I'm just translating from Hebrew now. Echa yeredach echad Elef. How, how can one chase a thousand? I, I believe it's a prophecy of Samson. And two, it doesn't literally say 10,000, but it's, it's, it's in, uh, 
Yenesiu Raba, which is the multiplications of what the one did. Two put 10,000 to flight. Now, could that be the two witnesses? I don't know. That's what I've been battling with. But that's how I came across the revelation, was trying to prayerfully trying to seek God to understand what did that represent. Except their rock had given them over. Or you can say sold them. Literally, it sold them. Uh, macharam, it means to sell them. See, imlo, uh, if not, ki tzorom, so, so is, is rock, so, your, their rock, if not that their rock, Mikaram, had sold them or given them over. And Hashem had delivered them up. This is where the revelation comes. Verse 31. For their rock is not our rock. This is the latter end of Israel now. Watch what he says. For their rock is not our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the venom of serpents and the cruel poison of asp. Is not this laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Sorry, let me go back to King James for you guys. I'm reading a different version here for you. I'll go back to verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me, let me go back to verse 31. For their rock is not our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Okay? Their rock is not our rock. The enemy, that is. Keep that in mind. Their rock is not our rock. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah, and the grapes are grapes of gall, and the clusters are bitter. Their wine is poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asp. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. That their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Israel's trusting in a rock that is not the rock that Israel trusted in when it was smitten in the wilderness. You understand what he's saying? The rock, all right, this, oh, this, this is beautiful here now. Watch this. Verse 31 again, for their rock is not our rock. Do you know what the Vatican calls the Pope? He is the vicar of Christ. He is to be, literally the word vicar is a substitute for Christ on earth. He claims to take the place of who? Peter. Did not Yeshua say, upon this rock I build my church? He wasn't talking about Peter. But they consider Peter to be that rock. And so therefore, every pope that takes the Peter's place is taking the place of Peter and claims to be the rock. And so God says, their rock is not our rock. Because why? They have forsaken Yeshua. Their rock is not the same. Their God is not the same. Mm. Verse 36, For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. He shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices? 
You don't think Rome won't have a part in building the third temple? Do you know right now there was a, 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 a brother sent me a thing on Facebook showing me a video there from one of the um, 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 Arab guys there in Jordan saying that they should build the third temple, but it should be given the sovereignty, should be given over to the Palestinian authority on the temple site. Isn't that funny? The Pope of Rome had just gone over there to visit uh, the Prince uh, of Jordan there, Prince Hussein, and, and now they're talking about building the third temple. He is such a crafty, sly devil is what he is. And now Moses is clearly showing you who the rock is who the Antichrist is. It's the one that has a rock, but it's not Israel's rock. See, Israel's rock really is Christ. But the Vatican is not accepting Christ to be that rock. They put the Pope as their rock. Now, he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's going to clear it all out for you. He says right here, And they shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Yes, the Pope of Rome. Right there, right there on King David's tomb, in the place they call the upper room, the Last Supper, he drank the wine already. Offering his spiritual sacrifices. To the dead, that is. The wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Mm -hmm. See, Israel is trusted in Rome. Look what Netanyahu's done. He's gone to the Pope. Look what uh, uh, Shimon Perez has done. Gone to the Pope, said the only man that can bring peace to the Middle East is, is Pope, for, Pope of Rome. Oh, really? So God has prophesied to you. Do you understand this, my brothers? In Israel. Do you understand this? He's prophet Moses has prophesied of our people and including the rabbis that are guilty of holding hands with the Vatican, a rock that is not our rock. So God says to you, let them rise up. Who did eat the fat of sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let him rise up and help you. Let him be your protection. You don't want him for your protection though, do you? No, you don't. See now that I, even I, am he. That's what God just said. Wahu ata ki ani ani hu. God's going to identify even more. If you don't get the part about the rock, He's fixing to tell you the rest of it. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound. I have wounded and I and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, as I live forever. If I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the long-haired uh, long heads of the enemy. Mm. Sing aloud, O ye nations of his people, for he doth avenge the blood of his servants and doth render vengeance to his adversaries and doth make expiation uh, expe as expedi expediation for the land of his people. And Moses came and spoke all this song in the ears of the people. He and Hoshea ben Nun, the son of Nun. Before I close, let me just share again with you in Obadiah. I want two places else I need to share with you quickly. E e Ezekiel 30. Five, I believe it is, but Obadiah. Let's finish up with Obadiah. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. See, there's that judgment coming against Rome. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. I told you. Moses prophesied right there. They're drinking. They're doing their sacrifices and drinking. 
my holy mountain, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Somebody wrote one time and said to me and everything, when I shared with them the dream the, that the Lord had showed me about, there was a man drinking on God's holy mountain, and I was on Mount Zion. And I said, that's not God's holy mountain. Mount Zion's not God's holy mountain. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. And where are they at? But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Verse 18, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau the stubble, and they shall kindle them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Mm. Now, let me take you real quick to, to uh, Ezekiel 35. That's where, where we'll end this at. So I know I've been lengthy. Ezekiel 35. Verse 7, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. That's because all the dignitaries of the world go to the Pope of Rome. I mean, come on, somebody needs to wake up on that. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men and thy hills and thy valleys and all thy rivers and they shall fall that are slain with the sword. And I will make a perpetual desolations and thy cities shall not return. And you shall know that I am the Lord because thou hast said these two nations, these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. That's because you've divided Israel between the West Bank and between the Israeli people. And now you're claiming you're going to take all of it for yourself. By the way, Palestinians, you really fell for a sucker on that one there. When Clearly, if you just read the, 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 the Jewish Bible, it said that he would rise up with a small people. And, of course, you're the small people that he became powerful with. And he's only deceived you. So now he's going to take both your nations there. But then God gets a little angry over all this. He says, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thy Thine anger and according to thy envy which thou hast used out of thine hatred against them and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee gonna make, God's going to make himself known to the Jews when he judges you well when is he going to judge them let's find out and thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have uh, heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel saying they are laid desolate they are given us to consume thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me and I have heard them thus saith the Lord God when the whole earth rejoiceth I will make thee desolate and by the way when the whole earth rejoices is when they kill the two witnesses and their dead bodies lay in the street according to Revelation 11 and the Bible says the whole earth rejoiceth that's when he destroys them Anyway, could go into a lot of other things. Micah chapter 4 and all of this. You know, my brother, sister, we're fixing to have a really hard time because God's going, this is the reason why. Micah 4 even, he's going to deliver us. But first, when the battle hits hot and heavy, he says to us, he he's keeps silence in Psalm 83, but then he says to Israel, let them deliver you. This rock that you've trusted in. You see, rabbinical brethren, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, I, I, I'm ashamed to see, and, and no doubt maybe because of the pressure. I, I don't know what you're under. I don't, I, I don't have to walk in your shoes. You should have never sold us out to Rome, Shimon Perez. You did sell us out to Rome. You're like, Ahab's son. But there will be a place to repent if you choose to do so. And that hour is soon upon us, soon at hand. My Gentile friends, Christian brothers and sisters around the world, Jewish brothers and sisters that may be already believers. I know there's many that watch now. We love you. We thank God for you. And we thank God for your support for this ministry and need your support in this ministry. Because what you're doing is making it possible for God to make these things known. Because it gives us a time to spend in prayer and study. Thank you for your prayers for our well-being as well. I love you. God bless you.